And it says write the following equations in the form AX equal B, where A, AX and B are matrices. So write it in that form. Now, to write it in that form, in the form where AX equal B, we look at the coefficients of X and Y to form our matrix A, and that's gonna be Coefficient of x, there is three. Coefficient of y, there is two. Coefficient of x, there is five. Coefficient of y here is four. And then x is the unknown matrix, which constitutes of x and y. And that is going to be equal to negative one, six. Nice. Now it says use a matrix method to solve for X and Y. Using a matrix method to solve for X and Y, first thing I want to point out is look at this. If AX is equal to B, right? If I pre-multiply both sides by A inverse, then what I'm gonna get is X is equal to A inverse times the matrix B. So what does that mean? That means that x, y is equal to the inverse of this matrix times minus one, six, all right? So that's all it is saying. So x, y is equal to one over the determinant, one over the determinant of A, which is AD minus BC. Three times four is 12, 12 minus five times two is 10, 12 minus 10 is two. That's a half of, adjoint of A is gonna be four, three, negative two, negative five. And that's being multiplied by minus one, six. Nice and easy. So when we do that now, what are we gonna get? When we multiply them across, we're getting that x, y is equal to, it's gonna be a half of row by column. Four times minus one is minus four, then minus two times six is minus 12, Minus four minus 12 is minus 16. Then row by a column, we have minus five. Three times six is, three times six is 18. And so what is that? 18 minus five is 13. And so a half of minus six, 13. So what that is telling us then is that X is equal to a half of minus 16 is negative eight. And then y is gonna be 13 over two. Some people like to write that is 6.5. So y is 6.5. Depending on how you prefer to write it, I have absolutely no issues. Y is 6.5. You can always check your answer. Always check your answer, always. What I want you to do to check your answer is go up to this equation and put it in your calculator. Three times negative eight plus two times 6.5, all right? And check your answer just to make sure you didn't make any error at all, all right? So three times negative eight plus two times 6.5. If you get negative one, then you're fine. So three times negative eight plus two times 6.5. And clearly something is off because this is not right. So let's check this back now. So we made a mistake somewhere. Let's find it out. So the determinant is 
12, three times four is 12, 12 minus 10 is two, so this is right. Times, we flip this to put the four there, the three there, then we negate this. So this is right, all right? So row by column. So this is four times minus one plus six times minus two. Negative 16 is right. Then we have negative five times negative one plus three times six. I see the issue. And this should not be 13. This should be 23. Giving it away. This is 23. This should be 23. So if this is 23, then X is actually, Y is actually 11.5. That's why it's good to check your answer. It's 11.5. 23 over two is 11.5. No, we should be fine. We are absolutely fine. So X is negative eight, Y is 11.5. No, we're correct. So as I said, remember to check your answer in the original equations. Now we act to the vectors part, and it says write as a column vector the vector OR. Now vector OR right here is going to be equal to the x coordinate is six and the y coordinate is two. So that's vector OR. Then we need vector OS. What is going to be vector OS? Vector OS is negative four, three. That's vector OS, negative four, three. Nice and easy. That's vector OS. Good. I want vector SR. Now what is vector SR? Vector SR is equal to OR minus OS. So let's work out what's OR minus OS. So OR minus OS is really six, two. Then we're subtracting vector OS, which is negative four, three. Now six minus negative four, that's gonna be positive 10, and then two minus three is negative one. So that's vector SR, 10 minus one. That's in column vector form. Then I want the, 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 the magnitude of OS. OS. The magnitude of OS is just gonna be equal to 10 square plus one square, all square rooted. And so that's 100 plus one, that's 101. And so OS, the magnitude of OS is the square root of 101 units square. One hundred and one units. That's the magnitude of vector OS. Wait, this vector OS, OS had my apologies, minus four and three. Oh gosh, it should be minus four square and three square. So it was the magnitude of SR. OS, remember, is four square plus three square, and that's the square root of 25, and that's five. So what I was doing before was working out the magnitude of actually SR, but I wanted the magnitude of OS, this one right here, all right? So not SR, I was working out the magnitude of SR. So they want the magnitude of OS. 
No, it says OT is two five. Prove that OST is a parallelogram. OT is two five. So I just like to check it out for myself. Two five would mean this is two, and this is five up here. So this would be the point T. All right. So to prove that they are parallelogram, first thing we need to show is that this is T. I'm gonna draw some lines and show you the three, the two things that we really need to show. We just need to show that ST, just need to show that ST is parallel to, this is two, five, make sure it's right. Two, three, four, five, six. This is two X's, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, I know this point was uh, two, five. Two, five will be, make sure it's fully accurate. This is two, five. And this is T. And this now needs to be right here. So all we need to show is that ST, we just need to show that ST, of course, the magnitude of ST should be equal to the magnitude of OR, all right? And the magnitude of OS is supposed to equal to the magnitude of RT, all right? And also, they need to be parallel to each other. So just need to show that RT is parallel to OS and they also have equal magnitude. And they will need to just show that ST is parallel to OR and they have equal magnitude. That will tell us that it forms a parallelogram. So let's do that. So let's start with ST, uh, OR, we have OR. So let's find ST. I can't bother to go around there. I'm just gonna write it down right here. What is ST? ST is equal to OT minus OS, all right? ST is equal to OT minus OS. Now ST, OT minus OS, so this is the X, remember this is two five, so two, Two minus minus four is going to give you six. ST two minus minus four is giving me six. And then five minus three is giving me two. So now look at that. Of course, OR is working out to be equal to ST. You see that? Nice. So work out ST right here now. Now we already have OS, so now we just need to work out what is RT. RT, RT remember is RT, and make that look like a T. RT is OT minus OR. OT minus OR, that is RT. So as you can see, OT minus OR is OT minus OR is two minus six is negative four, five minus two is three. So RS is negative four, three. Nice. So good now, you know, guys, we could do absolutely wonderful. Because what we've shown is that We've shown that they are parallelogram. Why it's a parallelogram? As you can see, ST is equal to OR. So you can tell them now, ST, vector ST is equal to vector OR. And they are parallel. That's one. Vector ST is equal to vector OR. The second thing is that, as we can see, OS is equal to RT. Number two, 
O S is equal to R T. Alright. Alright, so since these two vectors are equal, and of course, ST is parallel to OR. That's what that means. ST is parallel to OR. And also OS is parallel to RT. And so hence it's a parallelogram. Right? So hence, hence OSTR is a parallelogram. Nice and easy. Right? And that concludes the paper. No real issues, no real issues at all. So that's it. That's the end of 2015 January paper. And I wish you all the best preparing for your exam. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.